All right, Disciple fam, it's Josh here from Mode Step, and I'm going to be uh, running through a tune of ours on Disciple called Space Apocalypse. And I'm going to be showing you how I made that tune from start to finish. Let's go. So let's jump straight in. Um, this is a project that I started in 2017. Originally, it was a trap tune that we were just using to open up our set. Um, and originally it sounded a little bit like this. So kind of sounds kind of similar. Um, this was the original idea and then it dropped into something that sounds like this. but we didn't like it. We ended up scrapping it. Um, and when it came round to uh, working on this new EP for Disciple, I thought, let's go ahead and grab that intro because I really like the intro. It worked really well when we played it live. With a few little tweaks, it was gonna be a, uh, a new banger. So um, I'll show you the project as it was. It was quite simple. Um, it started off with this lovely synth here, which is made in Serum which is very, very simple, uh, saw wave with unison on it. Uh, yeah, and just the volume automated, I believe, which I can't even see. Oh no, it was just an envelope. That was literally it for the entire sound. So there's an envelope with unison turned up on a saw and with the detune um, modulating there slightly. But yeah, tiny bit of reverb on it and that was literally it. The other sounds in here, we've got also a very saw-driven uh, sub-patch, which are low Reese. Just here, which is again, just saw waves with unison turned up, going through a filter. Here in the background, we've just got a root note. I need to turn that up. We've just got a, a root note, a really high noise being played in the background just to fill out some atmosphere that uh, I've just looped over and over again. This arpeggiator, which it looks like I programmed in bit by bit and then added a simple delay to it. Um, and the original sound in operator just sounded like this. And with a bunch of delay and reverb, ended up sounding like this. And some of the pulsing sound is coming from this auto pan, which I've used as like a volume shaper at the end. But there's not much there. There's only about three or four sounds playing at one time. Um, and yeah. So after I was done with this project, I then exported this all out as a single stereo file and just dragged it into a new project, which I'm going to open up for you now. And this is two years later, um, bringing in this stereo file of the whip right here. And you can see I've come a long way with my organization in my project since then. Um, Ableton introduced groups in groups, which I seem to use over and over and over again to make sure I subgroup my sounds. Um, and yeah, so instead of that trap drop, we now have this very heavy, what sounds like a double drop kind of rhythm-esque banger. So. <laughs> So if I run through it from top to bottom, let's, let's say that's the best way to do it. I think the kick was provided by Virtual Riot's incredible uh, kick. Yep, that's one of Virtual Riot's kicks from his pack. Big up, Valentin, thank you very much for that. Tried to make my own kick drums. I can never seem to get them as good as he managed to in those. So I just end up using those ones. The snares on the other hand, these are um, a bunch of snares that I made in Serum um, and 
I basically have been, over the last few years or so, been making a whole collection of snare drums that are all made from Serum and Operator, which I can go through like my own sample pack and drag and drop all of my own samples, which is the case for quite a lot of this song, actually. Um, all the bass sounds are either serum patches or they are um, made up of microscopic little chops of a bunch of uh, bass sh one shots that I've been making over the years. Um, if you look in this folder here, I basically sit and for two days at a time, we'll just sit and make as many sounds as possible um, and then label them nicely, throw them in my folder so that when it comes to making a tune like this, I've got stuff to drag and drop into the project file. So if we look at uh, how this tune was made up, I wanted it to sound like a double drop. So I had one layer of bass synths, which was quite a like wall of sound type vibe, which sounded like this. And then I have um, a bunch of kind of wompy sounds to uh, create the groove in the tune. And then all together, they sound like this. If we have a look at what I use to make these screech sounds, I'm pretty sure they were just reverb filter, um, very basic patches. Again, just saw waves. Don't find me using that many complicated wave tables. That's literally just saw waves with the unison turned up um, and the reverb filter tuned in nicely with a tiny bit of uh, oscillation on it just to give it that kind of vibrato feel. Uh, this is the same patch but pitched down. Unfortunately, with the reverb filter, if you want to pitch something down, it's best to remake the patch because reverb filter doesn't really track pitch particularly well. And that's the main teeth of the sound, which again, the patch looks like it's very simple. Yep, again, just saw waves. The womps were probably slightly more complicated. I don't know if I have any of the patches here, actually, because I think the majority of this is made up of um, the sounds that I was talking about earlier. But I can play you what it sounds like um, soloed. It's actually kind of strange. They don't really sound like much as uh, soloed sounds, but when you combine them together, they create the sound that, that is the main drop. So the main sound is made up of uh, this sound. And this sound. And together they sound like this. And they phase a little bit, which gives it a more shiny feel than, um, than uh, if they're played by themselves. And then once I'm done with all my bases, I tend to cut all the lows out um, and make a new sub bass, which um, usually is just operator with an extra few harmonics added and then uh, saturated and then uh, all the highs cut off. And yeah, that's pretty much how I make my sub bases. I tend to do it all separate to the actual sounds just because I like to have the control and the volume that it gives you if you make it separate to just using the uh, bass sounds uh, the, the sub that comes from the sound itself. The vocal from the pack is actually something I found on Splice and I believe I did not too much to it. I think I made a left and right channel um, pitched down on the left and pitched up on the right which gives you this kind of Oh, maybe not. Maybe they're just different formants. Oh, no, I think here they are. There you go. And together it just gives you a... I do that quite a lot, um, especially if the sample's not incredible. It, um, it kind of 
kind of muddies up what the actual original sample was and makes it, I don't know, just a little more cool. I, I like doing that with a lot of my vocals. Um, yeah, I then throw absolutely all of the music other than the kick snare and the uh, crashes, rides and hi-hats. I throw them all through a sidechain group. I actually put my mastering chain before uh, the side chaining on that group um, and for some reason that just means I can get my mixes to slap and have the transients better because the transients aren't being affected by the mastering um, so I can go really aggressive with the mastering just on my side chain group um, and it leaves loads of nice room um, for the kick and snare transients it means they're not being muddied up in the master whatsoever um, and then on the master, I have nothing but a Pro L and a tiny bit of imaging. So it just, uh, all the loudness comes from uh, pre, -side, pre side chain stuff on this large group of all the music. If you actually listen to it, it sounds a bit weird. <laughs> I find you can get stuff really loud that way because you don't have the kick and snare pushing into the limiter. So it means that you can really aggressively limit without affecting the sound too much. Um, and then, yeah, you just kind of make up the level on the master, make sure everything's kind of being mixed up to zero dB, which is what I tend to do. Kind of like a reverse mixing. I try and make it expand instead of, um, instead of trying to mix everything and push it into a limiter. I just make sure there's, there's space for everything in the mix. Um, and if there isn't space for it, try and create it somehow. For example, with the tops on this tune, I did a separate volume shaping, which is a really tiny uh, 16th note cut every time there's a transient, just so it allows the kick top end and the snare top end to punch through that tiny bit. Yeah, and that way it just, I, I just tend to get really good results, really clear results um, and really loud results, which is obviously what you want with a heavy dubstep tune. Another thing I do on my master is just for uh, a visual uh, thing, I tend to put the spectral analyzer on. And over the years, I've just been able to, with my eyes, tell if something good or bad is happening. For example, when I look back at this, I can tell straight away that the, uh, the bases, the sub bass is tickling in around minus six and just above, which is what you'll find a lot of dubstep producers are kind of aiming towards. It's the most balanced sub that you can get for a sound system um, without it being too low or distorting too much. Um, but yeah, over the years, I always keep this on my master, keep my eyes on it at all times so I can kind of visually see the frequencies as well as using my ears. It means you can actually mix down your tune without even having a particularly great set of monitors, which these don't put anything out under about 60 hertz, so a lot of that's guesswork for me anyway. So that wraps it up. That was a somewhat brief run through of how we made Space Apocalypse. Um, I hope it's given you some insight as to how we made the tune. Um, if you like it, give it a listen, cop it now on Disciple, and make sure you get a lovely t-shirt as well. See you later. I forgot to like the Disciple YouTube video, and look what happened! So whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe. Symptoms may include opening a wormhole. <laughs> How do you look? Can I, can I sit? Yeah. My, my yeah, you're good, man. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Sweet.